You guys ask, I respond. Today's question is, how do you deal with imperial units? Do you think about temperatures, distances, and other measurements in Fahrenheit, inches, miles, gallons, etc.? Or do you convert everything into metric units? Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Feli, I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio, on and off since 2016. After last week's Ask a German episode, I got a lot of questions for this category from you guys, and I asked you on Instagram which one you want to see next, and a lot of you wanted to know if I think about measurements in the metric system that is used in Germany and most parts of the world, or in the imperial system that is used here in the US and how long it took me to get used to that. And before I answer that, I should probably say that just in general, I am not the best with measurements. When people ask me to estimate how much people were in a crowd or something like that, I always just jokingly say, oh, you know, like a million, because I really just don't have a good feeling for that at all. And it's kind of similar with distances when people ask me how far something is. So that applies to both the imperial and the metric system for me. That being said though, of course, I'm more familiar with the metric system. If you tell me something is 200 meters away, that definitely gives me a much better idea than if you say it's 700 feet away. And when Ben and I started doing home improvement projects in our house last year, I was honestly shocked by how impractical the imperial system really is. I mean, I obviously knew that the different units weren't all connected to each other like they are in the metric system, so you can't just divide something by 10 or by 100 to change the unit. But when we did the shiplap wall in our bedroom last year, Ben would take a bunch of measurements and I'd always write them down, and this is what my notes looked like. 130 and 5 eighths, 2 15 16 right? <laughs> 89 and 5 eighths, 7 eighths across, 13 and 11 sixteenths, 63 and 1 32nd, and then he'd sometimes randomly give me a decimal measurement, like 10.5 inches or something like that. And I'd be like, what is happening? That was literally the point where I was like, how do you guys live with this pain of a measurement system and not lose your minds all the time? I mean, do you realize how difficult it is to calculate where the center is of 31 and 5 8 inches, let alone calculating two thirds of that or something. And don't even get me started on when you look at furniture dimensions and it'll say 36 inches wide and then it throws in another measurement of 6.6 .6 feet, which mind you is not the same as 6 feet and 6 inches. So taking measurements almost always comes with a lot of math in this country and what can I say? It's just miserable. <laughs> and just to give you guys some background information here, because I'm throwing around a bunch of different measurement units in this video, in the metric system you have a millimeter, then 10 millimeters are a centimeter, 10 centimeters are one decimeter, 100 centimeters or 10 decimeters are one meter, a thousand meters are one kilometer, and so on. And this is also related to volume, so one liter is one cubic decimeter, for example. So a cube of 10 centimeters by 10 by 10. And the same goes for kilos and grams, right? A thousand milligrams are one gram, a thousand grams are one kilogram, a thousand kilograms are one ton, and so on. In the imperial system, however, they use all kinds of different units together. There's an inch, which equals 2.54 centimeters, then 12 inches are one foot, three feet are a yard, and then 1,760 yards, or 5,280 feet, are one mile, which equals about 1.6 kilometers. Makes sense, right? Then of course, when you cook or bake, there's a fluid ounce, which is 29.57 milliliters, a cup, which is 236.6 milliliters, which is also half a pint and 1 16th of a gallon, which is 128 fluid ounces or about 3.78 liters. <sighs> oh yeah, and you gotta make sure that you don't get confused between fluid ounces and regular ounces, which are used as a weight measurement. And one ounce is 0 0.06 pounds or 28.35 grams. And if you thought that a pound is exactly half a kilogram, which would make that conversion fairly simple at least, Nope, it's actually 0 0.45 kilograms, so that's not super easy math either. And then of course there's Fahrenheit for temperatures, where 32 degrees marks the freezing point and water boils at 212 degrees. So if you can't tell by now, 
I find the imperial system very confusing and I obviously had to look all of these numbers up. It's not like I know any of this by heart. And that probably already answers the questions to a certain extent. So for the most part, no, I don't use imperial units in my head. But of course I am exposed to them a lot. So we do have measuring cups for the imperial units at home. All of our tape measures are imperial units and I kind of have a vague idea of how much a gallon is because milk here usually comes in one or half gallon containers. This is a half gallon. Then of course I do know my own height in feet and inches. I'm 136 centimeters tall which equals five foot four so five feet and four inches and I also know that when people are over six foot tall they're pretty tall and when they're over seven feet tall they struggle getting through the door and should probably consider a career in basketball. When it comes to my weight though I've been in a few situations where I was asked that like when I got my driver's license here or at the doctors and that is something that I don't usually know. I don't weigh myself a lot in general but if anything I'll know it in kilograms and then I'll know that in pounds it's double that plus a little bit but I usually just have to convert it in my phone. In terms of temperature, I actually have two different weather apps on my phone. One is set to Fahrenheit and one is set to Celsius and I usually check both of them. I mean, after all these years, I definitely have a general feeling for Fahrenheit, but I usually like to double check and look at the Celsius too. Like I know that temperatures over 60 degrees Fahrenheit are getting warm. I know that over 75, it's pretty much summer weather. And when it's in the 80s or even 90s, it's getting really hot. And of course I know that everything under 40 is really cold and under 32 it's actually freezing but if you give me the temperature in Fahrenheit I wouldn't be able to tell you the exact conversion to Celsius. It's more like how you learn temperatures as a kid for me like I would see the temperature being at 18 degrees Celsius as a kid and I would notice that it feels really nice out and that I don't have to wear a jacket anymore so over time I kind of learned what 18 degrees Celsius felt like and I'm pretty much going through that same process again with Fahrenheit if that makes sense. What honestly helps a bit with temperatures is that most houses here have a thermostat so I'm very familiar with what temperature we usually set that to in the winter and in the summer and same when you have a thermostat in your car like you just get a kind of a good feeling of what it feels like when you set it to 75 degrees versus 65. Now when it comes to distances I do actually have my Google Maps set to miles and feet so I am going with the full American experience in that regard and I do think that I've gotten somewhat of a feeling for how long I still have to go when it tells me 500 feet but if we're being real, I honestly mostly just rely on the map. So like the graphic where it shows me how many more intersections it is until I have to turn. And that's honestly the same when I have it set to meters as well. Now, as the true German I am, I do also have a measuring cup that has liters on it, just in case I want to make something from a German recipe. And I do also have a ruler with metric units on it. And just the other day when we did this faux brick wall in our kitchen, we just went ahead and used the metric ruler for that because it just made it a lot easier to calculate where all the cutouts are and divide it by a half or a quarter or something. So what are your takes on the whole imperial versus metric system topic? Let me know in the comments below. And if there are other expats watching who live in the US but grew up with the metric system, how do you guys handle that? And I also have a very important question to all of my American viewers. When are you guys finally gonna switch to the metric system and make all of our lives easier? Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's Ask a German episode. Put your questions for this category in the comments below with the hashtag Ask a German. And for next week's question, I'll actually need the input from my German viewers. So be on the outlook for a post on my YouTube community tab, Facebook and Instagram. If you enjoy my content, it would be a huge support if you hit the subscribe button or even support me on Patreon. You can buy me a coffee or just send me a super thanks down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and for your support and I'll be back with a new video on Sunday for you. Tschüss!